Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is a mini lesson on asking questions, level one, observational questions. The icon for asking questions is a question mark, and that's what scientists do. They ask questions, but they don't just ask questions, they ask questions about natural phenomena. So I'm gonna put this up here, and it'll guide our work as we start to develop some observational questions. First thing we'll always do is we'll identify the phenomena that we're trying to ask observational questions about. And then we don't start with just questions. That's why they're called observational questions. What we'll do is we'll carefully observe the phenomena and then we'll use the observations that we make to develop questions. And then with those questions, we'll figure out are any of those questions that could lead to investigations. So after watching this video, you should be able to ask observational questions about phenomena like the leaves in your backyard or the pushes and pulls in a cart. But I'm gonna start by showing you how I would ask observational questions about these wooden stacking stones. And then we're gonna ask questions together on these seashells. And so let me get started. Okay, so the phenomena that I've been given are these wooden stacking stones. So they stack, it's kind of hard to see in the video, but they're gonna be able to stack on top of each other like that. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna write down what is the phenomena that I'm going to be asking questions about? All right, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna carefully observe the phenomena. So I'm gonna just play with these for a little bit and then maybe stack them up. Okay, so as you look at each of these stones, they have a lot of flat surfaces around the outside. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna make some observations. When you're making observations in science, you wanna use all your senses. What do I see? What do I feel? What do I hear? What do I smell? And so what I'm gonna do is just write some observations down here, some things that I notice, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, the observations that I've made, just playing around with these wooden stacking stones, uh, number one, that they come in three sizes, large, medium, and small. A really cool thing to do in science is to start counting. And so I count the, the number of faces and I found the small ones actually have more faces than the large and medium. I found that some of those faces are stable. In other words, you can just put them on this face or you can put them on this face or you can put them on this face and they're going to be stable faces but some of those are unstable so it all depends on the stone and then the last thing is that there's going to be different colors and so once you've made a number of observations all we do is turn those observations into questions and so it's always easy to notice but now we're just going to wonder so let me write down some questions and each of those are going to be related to an observation Okay, the questions that I've come up with for the size is just wondering, do all the medium stones weigh the same or do they have the same weight? Uh, when it comes to faces, I asked, um, why do they have different numbers of faces? Why are the smalls actually have more faces than the medium and the large? Next one, which size stones have more stable faces? And the last one, when it comes to color, which of the colors is the most beautiful? And so after I've asked all these questions, the next thing that I wanna figure out are any of those questions that could lead to scientific investigation. So I could gather some evidence and then answer those questions. And so I'm gonna start by identifying the questions which I couldn't answer. So these two colors, why do they have different numbers of faces and which of the colors is most beautiful? I couldn't just investigate this right now sitting at this table. 
because I'd have to talk to the people who made it. And this one, which of the colors is most beautiful, I can't really answer that because that's not a scientific question, that's an opinion. I might have an opinion, but you might differ when it comes to that opinion. So we would just call those questions that we can't really investigate with a scientific investigation. Next thing I'm going to do is for the ones that I could investigate, I'm just going to come up with a little, in, little investigation that I could do to answer that question. Okay, the way that I thought I could just answer this question to all the medium stones is I could just put them on a scale. I could put them on a electric balance. Or this one, which size stones uh, have more stable faces? I could just test them. I could try all the different faces of the medium stone and the small stone and the large stone. And so the idea with observational investigations is you always start with a phenomena, you make some observations, turn those into questions, and then you figure out which of those can I investigate. So I'm going to clean this up and then and you're going to get a chance to ask some observational questions of your own. Okay, now we're going to ask some questions together. I've just got some various seashells. And so what I'd love to have you do is uh, do what we just did. So make some observations, ask some questions, and then figure out which of those could be investigated. So if you would, pause the video. You could use the slides below. Then unpause the video and we'll see how our questions compare. Okay, the first thing I would do is I would want to just, I know it's hard in the video, but I would want to feel and look at uh, the different seashells. And lots of times if you just use patterns to figure out what groups there are, that might help. Okay, so the first thing that we do when we're ever looking at observational questions is we define the phenomenon. Right, so we're trying to ask some observational questions about the seashells themselves. And so the first thing I would do is just list a bunch of observations. Don't just think about what you see, but what you might feel. Okay, so if I start with my observations, first of all, I found that there are really two groups. You have these fan-like seashells, and then you have these spiral seashells. And I found that these are kind of rough to the touch, and these are going to be smoother. I also found they all have essentially the same colors. They're white and brown in color. And then I found these are really wrapped. So in a spiral shell, that shell is just it appears to be wrapped around in circle after circle. And then finally, in all of these, all of them have some open space on the inside. So these are examples of observations observations. You probably had different ones, but now I'm going to use those observations to turn them into questions. Okay, so the questions I came up with is just using the rough fans, do all fan shaped seashells have rough ridges? Are the seashells which more brown, like older? Do spiral seashells have more total shell than fan seashells? And what lived inside all of these shells? So the next thing I want to do is go through and figure out, okay, which of these observational questions could I investigate? Which of these could I answer right now? Okay, so for this one, uh, if I really want to figure out if fan-shaped seashells all have rough ridges, I'd have to look at a large group. I've got a bunch of other seashells, so I could investigate those. Are the brown ones more old in color? It's a really cool question, but I don't know 
how I could investigate that, at least with the material I have right now. It doesn't mean it's a bad question. Do spiral seashells have more total shell? I thought you could just grab a bunch that are very similar in size and figure out on a scale, would, would the spiral seashells weigh more? And the last one, what lived inside of all of these? I could do some research on it, but I couldn't really investigate it scientifically. And so these are observational questions. We were able to ask some observational questions about these stones and then seashells. So what you could do is just keep practicing. I've got some uh, photographs and some slides down below. You could look at observational questions in leaves or even pushes and pulls in a cart. So those are observational questions again. We look at a phenomena, we observe carefully, then we ask questions and figure out which ones we can investigate. And I hope that was helpful.